Mountain News, first at four, continues. Our first alert weather day continues as rounds of heavy rain are possible into the weekend, thanks in part to Hurricane Helene. Meteorologist Eric Dean has more on what to expect here. Hi, right, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon, everybody. And as you mentioned, we are keeping an eye on the tropics, but right now we are focusing on a lot of rain that's just pushing up through eastern Kentucky. This is a scene right now in Pikeville, and you can see uh, the rain is still coming down at this hour. Portions of Pike County over the past 24 hours received under an inch and a half of much much needed rain. So there's some good news there. Matter of fact, over towards uh, portions of Harlan County, picking up over two and a half inches over the past 24 hours. And there's live pinpoint Doppler radar. And you can see it is lit up at this hour. And you can see as we take a look over the past uh, three hours, how it just started to get its act together. And we'll keep the rain chances in the forecast for the next several hours. And temperatures right now in the mid to upper 60s, low 70s towards Moorhead as well as Somerset. Pikeville's at 66, Clintwood is at 62. We'll keep the rain chances in the forecast for the next several hours when temperatures not moving much. Mid to upper 60s will be the rule. And when you wake up in the morning, we'll see uh, temperatures in the low to mid 60s. Now, again, the question is how long will the rain chances last? Because we have first alert weather days out until Sunday. Details in a few minutes, Steve. All right, Eric, thank you. Well, the storm in the Gulf of Mexico named Helene is now a hurricane and is expected to grow and strengthen as it barrels toward the United States. Forecasters expect it will slam into Florida's Big Bend region later tomorrow as a major hurricane. CBS's Nicole Valdez is there in the city of Crystal River with the latest. Helene was just a tropical storm when it hit Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula Wednesday morning, drenching the tourist hotspot of Cancun. Now it's a hurricane and forecasters expect it to intensify before hitting Florida's northwest coast. In the city of Crystal River, church members came together for some heavy lifting, moving refrigerators and freezers from a bound coffee shop. The pastor who owns this shop says he's not taking any chances after Hurricane Idalia last year and Debbie just last month. So it's just a matter of getting in, getting everything out, and then hoping, praying that it's not as bad as they say it's going to be. Now you've seen this before, boarded up windows. They are no strange sight when we talk about a hurricane heading this way, but the biggest concern here is catastrophic storm surge. We are talking feet of water, so there is a lot riding on these sandbags. Forecasters say the storm surge could be as high as 15 feet. In Steenhatchee, Florida, this marina has been cleared out. Nearly every boat has been moved. We do anticipate uh, direct impact. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has declared a state of emergency for most of the state, with mandatory evacuations in effect for some living along the coast. You can hide from the wind, and there will be significant wind on this storm. Uh, but you got to run from the water. Federal task forces from around the country have been activated and some already headed to the region. I'm hoping that people evacuated, that when we do a search, that it's just to make sure that they did evacuate. After hitting Florida, Helene is expected to spin through the southeast with damaging winds, flash flooding, and a tornado threat. Nicole Valdez, CBS News, Crystal River, Florida. And of course, we'll keep you updated on the hurricane as it gets closer to Florida. Overnight in the Middle East, Israel's military intercepted the first Hezbollah missile that was apparently aimed at Tel Aviv. Hezbollah says the target was Israel's intelligence headquarters, while in Beirut, the head of Hezbollah's rocket forces was killed in an Israeli airstrike yesterday. CBS's Chris Livesay reports from inside Israel. The heart of Beirut's densely populated southern suburbs targeted in yet another airstrike, with Hezbollah later confirming Ibrahim Kubaisi, the leader of its rocket and missile force, was among the dead. As tens of thousands of civilians flee the Israeli military's bombardment of Lebanon's south and beyond, many with no clear idea of where to go. Since Monday, hundreds have been killed and thousands wounded, including children, according to Lebanese health officials. This man, pulled from the ruins of what was once his home, barely survived. Israel says it's only targeting Hezbollah military infrastructure and missile launch sites. 
Hezbollah says it won't stop shooting until Israel pulls out of Gaza, while Israel demands Hezbollah stop its attacks so that around 60,000 of its displaced residents from northern Israel can return to their homes, like the battered ones we saw in the town of Kiryat Bialik. Hezbollah has fired hundreds of rockets and drones across the border with Israel in the past week alone. Now, most of them have been intercepted by Israel's Iron Dome defenses, but not all of them. And this morning, smoke over the horizon of Tel Aviv, where Israelis were woken to the blaring of sirens after the Israeli military intercepted a surface-to-surface -surface missile, the first time the Iran-backed militants have ever fired such a weapon at Israel's biggest city. A major escalation for an army that's badly outgunned and licking its wounds. In the past week, their booby trap beepers and walkie-talkies exploded. Then, multiple targeted killings took out Hezbollah's top military leadership. Despite calls from the U.S. to de-escalate, the attacks on both sides are ratcheting up. Chris Livesay, CBS News. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky took to the stage at the United Nations General Assembly warning of dire intentions from Russia. Zelensky told member nations that the Kremlin is planning attacks on Ukraine's nuclear power plants. He says Vladimir Putin has already destroyed his nation's thermal plants, seeking to leave Ukrainians in the cold and dark as the war approaches its third winter. The Ukrainian leader called on member nations to stand together. I want peace for my people, real peace and just peace, and I'm asking for your support from all nations of the world. We do not divide the world. I ask the same of you, do not divide the world. Zelensky also criticized Russia's veto power on the UN Security Council. The Kremlin has said it is, quote, impossible to force Russia to peace. A Senate report is revealing more of the failures that allowed a would-be assassin to open fire on former President Donald Trump in July. An investigation found that before the shots rang out in Butler, Pennsylvania, the Secret Service suffered a number of breakdowns in equipment, communication, and planning. CBS's Scott McFarlane reports. Before a gunman opened fire on former President Donald Trump in Butler, Pennsylvania, a U.S. Senate investigation now reveals there were a series of missed warning signs. According to the new report, 27 minutes before the shooting, the Secret Service learned of a suspicious person with a rangefinder near the event. Two minutes before he opened fire, the Secret Service was warned someone was on the roof just a few hundred yards from the stage. And 22 seconds before he pulled the trigger, local police sent a radio alert that the man was armed. But Secret Service agents told Senate investigators they were not informed. President Trump almost being killed was a result of multiple failures of the Secret Service. The Senate investigation revealed the agency suffered from faulty radio equipment, that they failed to operate a counter drone system over the Butler site, sparking bipartisan criticism. There needs to be a house cleaning in procedure, practices, and personnel. The report also revealed July 13th was the first Trump 2024 campaign event for which the agency deployed counter snipers because of a classified intelligence warning of a possible risk from Iran. But the warning wasn't fully shared with other Secret Service agents. The investigators noted without the counter snipers, the bloodshed would have been much worse. Had the counter sniper not been able to immediately return fire, that shooter could have gotten off another 15 or 20 points. The Secret Service has since increased security protections for Trump, and the agency has its own internal review still underway. Scott McFarland, CBS News, Washington. As officials look into that assassination attempt, former President Trump is campaigning in North Carolina. The former president criticized the leadership of President Joe Biden's administration. Trump also spoke about how he would retaliate against assassination attempts if president. Well, while uh, Donald Trump is in North Carolina, Democratic nominee Kamala Harris is making campaign stops in Pennsylvania. The vice president is making multiple stops this week in battleground states. We will have a closer look at the latest campaign news at 530. Approximately 210 homes remain evacuated due to a styrene leak from a rail car in Whitewater Township, Ohio. The rail car began leaking Tuesday afternoon. 
In addition to homes being evacuated, three river schools and a nearby Kroger were evacuated. Roads also remain closed in that area. Officials say they are monitoring air and water quality and they are working as quickly and safely as possible to mitigate the effects of the leak. A docu-series about Sean Diddy Combs is coming to Netflix. Executive producer Curtis 50 Cent Jackson says the series will focus on sexual assault and abuse allegations against Diddy, as well as the sex trafficking and racketeering charges he is facing. 50 Cent and director Alexandria Stapleton say the docu-series will span decades and will give a voice to the voiceless. A release date has not been announced. Coming up on First at Four, a company...